This conference will now be recorded. Work of the planning board is calling the meeting to order on Tuesday, September 17th. Any approval? Do I need approval? I move okay. to approve the minutes okay. of the last meeting with uh, the addition of as discussed and decided at the meeting following B20 and approval of minutes. And I'll second that. Uh, all the vote for passes. Um, public comments. We have no one here today. Um, our fourth is the ordinance on amendment to the Unified Development Ordinance to clarify special and permitted uses in the B20 and the B30 zoning district. Frank, would you like to discuss that? <laughs> Uh, at the back of the package, there are just a couple of pages for our agenda tonight. This one is uh, shows the uses that we did not get included prior to uh, the vote of the commissioners. I'll get, I'll get right. Are you tracking where we are on the? I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Do you need me to wait until you get there? What page? And thank you for numbering the pages. What page number, um, Julie? What page number do you want? Well, it's the package right in front of. I'll go past page I three. I've got my package. Okay. What page? Uh, it's at the bottom. You very considerately numbered the pages. Well, not all. Yeah. This is not all. all. Right here. Yeah, some of them were, some of them were. Okay, everybody on the right page, 18 and 19, is that where we are? There should be a blue tab. She didn't put it. Outside, so I, yeah. on that. This is, I've got mine that I, there you go. Okay. All right, got it. We'll try to come up with a better way. Yeah, so the blue tab is where this agenda item starts. Yeah, 18 and 19. Okay. And it just shows that uh, uses that were not included at the Board of Commissioners meeting under B20 special use permit mm -hmm. are indicated as permitted uses. And they're just one, two, three, seven uses. Uh, the dog training facility is also uh, included as a permitted use in B30. And that was not included on the previous uh, material submitted to the Board of Commissioners mm. for their review. Gotcha. And a go-kart go track is permitted in B30, but we already have one in B20. You can have things in multiple zoning okay. districts. Right. They can be permitted in multiple zoning jurisdictions. Okay. Okay. Go-kart tracks, actually, unless I'm mistaken, they're actually not. No, they're not. Oh, they're just permitted in B20. I got you. Okay. B20. Sorry. I'll, Move to approve. I, <laughs> so, so essentially what it does is yes. all of the uses in B20 would be permitted. Yeah. There would be no special right. permit. Okay. Right. In B30, yep. it's, there are a lot of special use permits. The items that were up to you get concerned that you all voted on a couple of times. Yep. Yes, sir. Driving ranges. So These that, are the yes, ones that, that we rolled sense. into yep. B20. I understand. Makes sense. Okay. You'd like to make a motion? I did. Move to approve. And I'll second it. All in favor? We'll include that on the Board of Commissioners meeting agenda on October the uh, 11th, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, or the 14th, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, our next uh, item is the town center rezoning. Yeah, yeah so the, the, I'm happy to report to you the Board of Commissioners adopted the zoning 
uh, district, the town center zoning district that's now a part of the UDO. Um, if the planning board is so inclined, um, the next step would be to move on to actually rezone these specific parcels from either B20 uh, or R20 uh, or B10 or there's R30 as well um, to the town center zoning district. I won't go through all the details of what that district allows or doesn't allow, but it's much more flexible, allows all of the same uses that are currently allowed and a whole lot more uh, with more flexibility. So um, our intent, if you're so inclined, um, if you make such a recommendation, um, we will carry that to the Board of Commissioners and then we will go through the process. We have to notify all of the impacted property owners, all of the adjacent property owners, there's advertising requirements and so forth. And, we'll move forward with that process. So there's a, a Julie has put together a list uh, in the memo of all the affected parcels um, yeah, so that, right. that are included in there. Um, as I've shared with you before, um, and certainly some of you know this, um, I've personally uh, discussed the town center zoning district, I think with every single parcel owner uh, in the proposed boundaries. That map is the same uh, boundary that I showed to you when you were considering the district itself. So. I believe there's um, strong support for this. Um, and if you're so inclined, um, you could make a recommendation to take that to the board. Okay, and that's gonna basically make it more flexible for the, if I understand this correctly, that's gonna make it more flexible for the property owners to, in other words, it's gonna open up the ability to do other things with the property. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I guess primarily it, it, it promotes that village kind of town center, downtown type feel. Um, the biggest thing is it allows uh, mixed use development and multifamily residential uh, up to eight units per acre. It also allows kind of the smaller, um, smaller lot village type homes in there, in addition to everything that's currently allowed in those. Um, Excellent. And residential commercial mix together? Correct. Without a problem? Same building or same parcel. It really depends on what, the, what they decide. What they want to do. So I make a motion that we adopt it. May, may I ask one question? Sure. <clears throat> Where, I can't get in my head what Clubhouse Drive is. That's um, so Club, Clubhouse Drive is in the yellow for the top of that image uh, through the golf course. That's not a part of this. Uh, the Why is it? That's where the owner. Let's see which one is closed. It says Taylor, 224 Taylor Nation Road, 202 Clubhouse Drive. So it would be right in the front of it. <clears throat> yeah, there are no parcels in on Clubhouse Drive that are a part of this. That may be, just be the way the GIS system listed it. Oh, okay. um, but but uh, yeah, I want to clarify for you. There are no parcels on Clubhouse Drive. So Clubhouse Drive probably is attached to 224. It, it could be somehow. Yeah, I think um, one of them, as an example, is the golf course. Uh -huh, and that okay. could be it. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. It goes across. Okay. Oh, may I point out? Oh, because so we have the adjacent property owners in here as well. This is just. For the just the effect. That's how it's listed. Okay. In the GIS. All right, gotcha. Okay. See this little piece right here? Yes. Star Hill is there. Okay, Star Hills address is Clubhouse Yeah, but but the golf course is the golf course is not a part of this. Now, if they own parcels within that dark line boundary, then that would be a part of it. That is so, true. That's okay. what I just showed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yes. so the Star is. Thank you, Star Okay, it's, we probably need to put that in parentheses because I'm sure somebody on the board will have noticed it. You know that Star Star Hill. That yeah, drive. yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you. I'm glad you brought that up because I think you it got, obviously had me confused too. So <laughs> it's just a little thing. That's right. Yeah, that we need to fix. It's the little finger parcel <laughs> by the community college building, exactly. right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, the, now the one thing I will say to you is this is the proposal now. Um, in the future, uh, there may be other property owners outside of this area that want to be rezoned the town center, or yeah. you may want to rezone yeah, something to the town center, um, and we'll deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis as someone expresses interest in that. But this is the target area we we envisioned for the town center. Okay. I made a motion. Jeremy made a motion. Second motion. 
Uh, I'll make the second motion. Oh, I'll vote to agree. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Now that's passed to the Board of Commissioners, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. Yes. And so we'll um, we'll start that process that may or may not. a lot of work on you all. Yeah, so we may actually take that to the Board of Commissioners in November, um, depending on the public hearing uh, notices and so forth. But uh, we'll see. Um, uh, either October 14th or the November 12th meeting. Um, uh, number six, uh, at the last Board of Commissioners meeting last Monday, um, I just simply included in my written manager report that the planning board had talked a couple of times about whether or not we should require a zoning permit for lot clearing activities. And I told them that the planning board had a thoughtful discussion about that, but that you all were inclined to not require that. Um, primarily for the reason that most of the time it happens when someone proposes a new single family home. And, and there are really probably just rare occasions when someone clears the lot before they're ready to build the home. Um, uh, Commissioner Ritchie uh, just asked that I bring that issue back to you all um, for some additional discussion and consideration. Uh, if you're so inclined to recommend that, I'm happy to prepare that ordinance amendment for you to consider at your next meeting. Uh, if you're not, then I'll just report back to the Board of Commissioners that uh, the Planning Board was firm in its previous uh, judgment on that issue. I would be more comfortable if Mr. Williams were here to address this yes. because he was very adamant in his okay. uh, recommendation against this. Sure. And I, without his approval, I would not want to second guess Jeremy I, and and. Uh, Table. Certainly understandable. Uh, yeah. I agree with that. So, so can we, we can table it? Post. Yeah, we can. We'll put it on your agenda for your next meeting. Next. So. Okay. Yes. And this. If they, yeah, if because without his they, input, I agree 100. Okay. percent All right. Um, that's all we have. Um, the next board meeting Monday, October the 14th. The next planning board meeting Tuesday, October the 15th. Um, and so. Uh, I've got a few comments from yep. the staff perspective. So um, one is that um, uh, I wanted to, you all are aware that Laura Nelson has resigned from the planning board. Oh, yes. Um, we have a vacancy there. I have basically sent um, an inquiry to the board of commissioners to ask them, would you like us to advertise for new applicants for the planning board or would you like to consider the folks from the last round earlier this year that were not appointed or if there's someone else you know in the community you'd like to appoint and they've not given me any direction back yet as to what they'd like for us to do we obviously have a little bit of time to do that um, i will tell you that uh, one of the commissioners just this afternoon um, expressed interest to me and wanted me to mention to you all um, the idea of maybe appointing two alternate members to the planning board so as you all know, for the Board of Adjustment, it's a five-member board, but we have two alternates, and then those two step up if of the five is not available for the meeting. Uh, the concept is similar to that for the planning board. If, if you all think that's a, a good approach, um, we can prepare the appropriate uh, into the ordinance for you to consider at your next meeting. Uh, if not, I'll certainly report back. Well, um, you know, Ted, Ted's really busy right now, and like he's not able to be here tonight. So it might be a good idea to have two adjusting positions, okay? We, one, I, one to two, I, it would be my theory. Um, so uh, has he let you know he cannot be here tonight? No. Oh, no, but I, you know, I know he's, uh, Pam's sick and he's working out of, uh, is it Newburn? Yes, he's well, in Newburn. I think he's working out of Newburn. Well, it, it sounds like at least two of you are at least receptive to that idea. Um, if you all are receptive to that, what I'd like to be able to do is, this is coming from one town commissioner via converse, private conversation today. So what I'll do is mention it to the full board at their next meeting on October 14th, and then we'll plan to have it on your agenda on October the 15th uh, as okay. well, assuming they don't object to that. <laughs> and um, thank you. Yes, Can I and that you? way we won't have to cancel meetings because that has happened since I've yeah. I haven't been very many. Can I yeah, ask a fine. question? I want to ask Pax, uh, Miss Holt, oh, sorry. Uh, 
you've been on the board on and off. Have they done alternates in the past? No. Have you ever thought it's you know a good idea to do alternates? I, I don't object at all. Uh, I would prefer people who are on boards to come to meetings. Yes. But in the event that emergencies, family emergencies happen, uh, but that would mean that an alternate might have to attend all the meetings as well yeah, not to knowing. be effective. Yes, and that would be the thing that I would say is without without them attending, or at least whether it's virtually right. or in person, to know what what's going on, you exactly. know, sort of where the board's moving. That's, That's cool. the difficult part about it, about the alternates. Um, you know. Frank, I noticed before we got together that there was a lot of meetings that were not held. But maybe that was because there was nothing on the agenda. Well, I or, think, yeah, I think, so I started with the town um, in June of 2022. I think prior to that, there were a lot of meetings that got canceled because of lack of business. There were an awful lot of meetings, actually, after I started here uh, with that group. So mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would say to you, and, and I obviously was not here, so I don't know, but um, the commissioner was Commissioner Ritchie, and he actually represented to me that we used to have alternate planning board members. Um, but he, perhaps he's thinking of the Board of Adjustment. I'm not sure. I actually had to do some research to figure out if it was even legal. And I did actually consult with the School of Government at UNC. And you can have alternate planning board members if you would like, if they would like. You know, I think your point um, that you were kind of hinting at is, um, you know, is that person going to stay engaged enough, right? And are they going to want to do it if they don't ever get to participate, right? So there's kind of that balance there. And honestly, I don't know how the rest of our commissioners would feel about that. They may think that's wonderful or they may not like that idea. Did, did you find any evidence that we've had alternate members? I don't remember having a I, I didn't look uh, at that. I have not heard that before, um, but he felt like that we had in the past. Yeah, I know like the Board of adjust, Adjustment. Board, board of Adjustment, of adjustment typically yeah. does and always yeah. has, yeah. to the best of my knowledge. Um, and I know like the, some of the stuff here lately, they, they're they engaged because the meetings doesn't happen very often. So therefore, when a meeting does happen, they're there. Um, well, you know, we're getting ready. To but it's tough ready. being on the bench, though, right? If you don't get oh, yeah. to play, that would right? be hard. So, that truthfully yeah. would be difficult. After about five or six meetings, if I was an alternate on a planning board, I'd be like, "Well, I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to come. I don't sure. need to deal with it because I don't get well, to." We can always welcome come and and see what it's about. That's what I think they need that would need to do would be engaged and would need to, and maybe it's a trial period to see if it works or not. Well, we're getting ready to go into this town center, and there's probably going to be a lot of work and questions that we're going to have to go through. Think so? I think they've done I, the work. I know they've done the work. But. Well, I, I hope so, in the sense that I hope that eventually you'll get some proposals for projects, but realistically, that's going to take several years for all yeah. that to play out. But um, yeah, I mean, so I, I mean, I think if if you all and if the board of commissioners supports this idea. Um, I think you certainly could allow the two alternates, if that's how many there are, um, to participate in your discussions, but then yeah. just not yeah. vote. I exactly. mean, that's one way to approach it. Another would be kind of like the classic Board of Adjustment model, where if you don't need them, they don't participate. But, so. but I think maybe another, somebody, maybe at first, again, a trial period, to see if them discussing with us would help bring some more knowledge to some of the projects, because right. maybe some of them have... Sure some great ideas and, and maybe they're smarter than I am. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, you know, you know, which most have people right are. Vote, by being an yeah, and, and you know, the other approach that might achieve the same end goal is that there's there's no limit. Um, there's nothing that says you can only have five planning board members. I mean, the board could appoint seven planning board members and that way if someone was absent, it's not as big of an impact. One out of seven is not as big of an impact as far as one out of five. So. Um, there's different ways to look at it, but I, I, it sounds like I'm hearing from you all that you're open to the idea. Yes, so yes, let me share yes. it with the rest of the commissioners and, yes, and get their feedback. Um, I did want to tell you, you know, I mentioned before that um, I asked the board to give me some direction on how they want to appoint uh, someone to replace Laura Nelson. Um, there are five individuals that applied back in the early part of the year that were not appointed. 
Uh, one is uh, an individual named Kat Orock. Uh, one is Silvio, St I can't pronounce his last Stanis name, but I think Stanis, but I think you know Silvio. Yeah. Um, um, another woman uh, with the last name Higgins, and her first name's escaping me, uh, Sherry Higgins. Sure. Sherry Higgins. Uh, Tyler Waddell and Chuck Jenks. Those were the folks who right. expressed interest. And so Chuck who? Uh, Chuck Jenks. Okay. Um, and so Heather has approached all five of them to see if they were still interested in being considered. Um, she was able to um, reach four of them. She could not reach Silvio because he's out of the country, but the other four are interested in being appointed. So I've shared that with the Board of Commissioners. It'll be up to them to decide. It's clearly their yeah. purview yeah. to appoint people. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, and that's like his knowledge on a lot yeah. of this is, is wonderful. So yeah. getting another, if you could get another builder, in my opinion, that would be wonderful. But that's. Um, and the Board of Commissioners approved the, the various UDO amendments that uh, at their last meeting uh, last Monday night. So um, that's all I have. I don't know, Julie, if you have anything you want to share. Frank, listen, let me say something to you. I appreciate everything that you gave to the commissioners, you know, to vote on them and explaining things that of the work that's been done here sure. and related. And the work you've done, you know, you need to. On yourself a little bit more. Yes, well, I, I work for you. I'm, I'm but happy you can't to help. Leave, you can't so, leave Julie out of that either. That's right. Julie yeah. probably actually yeah. doesn't know about it. <laughs> uh, it. I appreciate the support for Julie and for me. So thank you. So, I hope we're going to make your job so. a little easier. A little bit. Every little bit helps, right? Absolutely. Um, the camera stuff. Can I ask a question on that? Sure. So if the county isn't going to do it and the, the board doesn't approve it what happens they've already approved they've approved yeah so, oh, okay for it my to, yeah so let me let me clarify okay. that for you because right. i think i know what you're saying so yeah. I, I i had a moment of confusion uh during the meeting so yeah. um there are certain ordinances that the very first time that the board considers them they have to have a super majority vote a two-thirds vote and in our case that's four to one yeah um, and I got confused when it was three to two, but I was incorrect. So that type of ordinance does not require the four to one on the first reading. So that CAMA vote is uh, uh, effective. Um, okay. it, it is in effect. Um, we have not started performing CAMA services because it has to go to the Coastal Resources Commission in November and they've got to formally approve it, which I expect they will, but we'll see. So. And that's where I was confused too. Yeah, yeah I so I apologize. It, I thought it did that so much. Are you going to do them, Brian? Am I going to do CAMA permits? Yeah. Uh, Julie's going to handle the CAMA permits, and I'm happy to help uh, if and when needed. So. Okay. So, uh, did you have staff comments? I don't want to butt in if you can. Um. Because I have. Staff yeah, staff just one staff. comment. Um. Uh, um. I'll be going to. Uh, a FEMA workshop in uh, Bloomington in November to learn more about uh, substantial damage and substantial improvement. So after a storm, how do you identify properties that are substantially damaged and what are the steps to help to get them improved? So well, that's a good thing. How yeah. long will that be? It's a four day workshop. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And it's uh, you know conducted by the FEMA regional people for our area. So I think it's a good opportunity to be able to attend. Oh, yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Any, so, any training you can get and get the board to approve it, go for it. But I sincerely hope you're not planning to travel back and forth each day. I, I really don't mind traveling back and forth. Oh, listen, <laughs> that's, that's a lot to ask. Of, of, I, I think we should have a a fun. It's a two hour yeah. drive. So, so I, I pretty much will give Julie the option to do whatever she'd prefer Good. on that. So, I mean, some, sometimes it's, sometimes you want to be in your own bed if it's yeah. not well, that far away. But I would rather. So well, that's four yeah. hours on the road. Well, I used to drive close to two and a half to three every day. So it's really not that bad. <laughs> So, well, but, well, that's that's and, your choice. Yeah. We'll stay out. Of and it. That, and that training is is through the, it's part of the flood uh, insurance program yeah, as well. Be, so it'd be helpful for us uh, in that sense. Okay, 
I had a couple of comments if the staff is finished with comments, Madam Chairman, if I may. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I've been looking over this, and thank you very much, because I have been over this repeatedly. Thank you for numbering the pages. Now, this one isn't numbered, but the one I studied is. Yeah, That's okay. That's all right. I mean, I, I really studied. Now, I want to point out just a couple of things. Oh, and a, and a request. If we're having tables, let's put the categories of zoning on the top of each page, please. Not just the first one. Can't we do that? Absolutely. Makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I Maybe would, if the software allows them, probably. No, no, no. It's just an insert. It's tough and to I read. Used to, I used to do that. Yeah. And I, I, so I went and but sometimes the software is so ridiculous to try to get something to happen, right. and you finally go, I'm not doing that. What so. program you use it for this, Julie? Sometimes I wind up just writing it in by hand because yeah. it's I easier. Did. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what program are you using, Frank? Uh, sometimes yeah. I do it by hand, but that's, that's <laughs> Microsoft Word, I think, right, right. there. Hold okay. It. My questions are, all right, in what zone are cemeteries allowed? Oh, in what zones are what? Cemeteries allowed. Well, I know one zone they're allowed in. We I have know, a cemetery. In I know two where they are, but yeah. where are they allowed? I don't know where they're, they're not allowed. mentioned. Yeah. It's never I'm, been um, never been addressed. Yeah, like the to Brown my Holland no. cemeteries over off Taylor Notion Road, well, off Hunter uh, Brown Lane. They are existing uses. They're yeah. not permitted uses, and and. Well, where am I going to be buried? <laughs> That's my issue. But in the cemeteries on Facial, right? And Golf and Dolphin Driving Range. Yep. And in the town center zoning area. Yep. We're going to put you in town hall right here in the concrete. <laughs> so that's, that's one question. For we'll future, put you out there in the fifth future. future. Where are cemeteries allowed? You know, interestingly enough, I mean, I don't know that I would make this leap if we got confronted with it, but funeral homes are allowed in B10 and B20. That's still pretty different than the cemetery, I Very think. Different. But um, that's the closest thing. So you, you all may want to discuss at some point where you think they're appropriate. But Julie's right. The ones that are existing are... Yeah. Yeah, already right. covered. So. Now, where are libraries allowed? Since the only library that we have is yes. presently. Now, now, the only thing, the other thing I would say, um, just because um, the ordinance was just adopted last Monday night, if someone proposed a new cemetery, um, it would default to being allowed by special use in the B30 zone. Um, that's the default language that you all reviewed, and the Board of Commissioners approved that. So. Which that may not, that's probably not sufficient, but that's, that would happen. So. so I'm just bringing these up because it takes a lot of studying for me to get these things in my fourth head. The only library we have is now in an R20 zone. That's not allowed in this office. That's so. correct. Typically, governmental uses are allowed in all of them. Um, I will tell you, um, you know, as I'm working through the simplified UDO, um, I do have a category for governmental uses and libraries and things like that. Um, but we can certainly address that. Well, um, since it specifically says libraries. Yeah, yeah. If you look at, uh, Julie just pointed out to me, if you look under local government uses, including facilities, buildings, and parks, they're all permitted. Yeah. Right, but this is a local government. This is a community college. That's local government. The community college is, is local government, um, okay. and it's but a it's, county library. But technically, it's, um, okay. it's going to be technical. It's, right. it's a corporation. Right. Not it's local government. Be our county. I would say if someone proposed a new library, we would absolutely allow it under that local government okay. um, classification. Even if it was a community library. Yeah, I think so. Now, if it, if it was a for-profit library, which I can't imagine would happen, it might cause some <laughs> questions. But, yeah, we, we would accommodate it under that. What else would they have to be selling? <laughs> so we don't need to go there. Library, right? Pardon? We added to the library about five years ago. Certainly, we, we enlarged it. Yeah. So, and then another question I had was, um, uh, let's see. No, I, I, 
medical facilities and services, including hospital clinics and medical labs. Now, but there, it's all right because it's commercial. Commercial. But well, I we did have a, a medical question. medical center, right? Pardon me? The medical center down here on 24. What's the question? That's the one I was. That's com under, falls under commercial. Commercial, yes. But I had a question about marinas. They're allowed in R10, R10M, R13, R20, but not in R30. And I'd like that to be an item for discussion in the future. Why aren't they allowed in R30? Pardon me? I said, why wouldn't they be allowed in R30? I don't know. That's yeah. why I'm just bringing up these issues because I really poured over these papers. And these are things that, that by you pouring over and, and thinking outside the box, you know, as far as... Yeah, just yeah. just asking. Yeah. Just asking. Yeah, I don't know the history on R30 and marinas. Um, but yeah. Because we only really have Do we R30. Have that much land to have a marina. Sure. Yeah. You always got enough weird land to have that marina. I, I I think that I don't have the zoning map in front of me. I apologize, but I think that um, the only R30 area on the water. Well, actually, you have all of Pettiford Creek, so never yeah. mind. So, yes. But then I think you have like Country Club Point and yes. that area is yeah. part of R30. So. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yes. That was intended to be like Bay Biscayne, yeah. an island. Mm -hmm. But it never got dug all the way. It may be an island today after all the rain. Oh, no, God. it was all underwater. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, well, we're questioning the marina, R30. Um, in now, the cemetery. Home day it's home different. child daycare. It's not allowed in R10 facial, which I don't understand because it's it's permitted in probably rules from the old town of R13, R20, and R30. And I remember there was a there was one approved. Well, it's it's allowed in R R twenty, which is where one was. But is there a reason that home child daycare is not allowed in R ten? I'd I'd just like to discuss these in the future. Uh, I don't want to slow the process down. No, all good all good questions, and that's why you're here. You know, Bayshore was its own little city. I mean, mayor. Oh yeah. So some of these things probably just was never was a look we did. Did you know that, Frank? Bayshore had its own little mayor. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, we had a Bayshore had a mayor <laughs> until the town annexed it. I would just say there are some interesting town limit lines uh, around here, but I, I gather the, the history is interesting on it. So, Well, huh. one of the reasons that Vogue has LB Page and the property to, are you familiar with that story? Well, and I, I've always been told that Vogue and Pelletier and Cedar Point Incorporated because they didn't want to be part of Cape Carteret. So, that, um, so. And they adamantly did not want to be part of it. So I uh, made a deal with Cape Carteret to give them Whalewood, which allowed them to annex Fox Forest if they would leave my friends on 24 out of Cape Carteret. Hmm. And then okay. Quail was a dump site, right? At one point, Quailwood Village was. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Oh, I loved it. But... Um, <laughs> But Neil Whitford was the attorney, and he threw up a, uh, an agreement that neither town could annex the 12 acres between Bogue and Cape Carteret without approval, landowner approval. Of course, that has now been handled by the legislature. That, that can't be done involuntarily anyway. Sure. But, but that was the deal. That was the deal. So... Yeah. Well, we, we can we can be here all night I'm long sorry. talking. No, 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 talking about the pros and that, cons that of all those things. Okay. It is interesting. So. Yes, it's odd. Uh, 
Can we table this for like a meeting, a special meeting, so we can go through these little things and make sure we have them correct? Well, um, I think we just add them to like just just, just to discuss the ones that she's talking about and move the rest forward. I mean, truthfully, yeah, I mean, we've already moved it down. forward. Exactly, we've moved it forward. Now we just at our next whenever it gets back, we discuss these these things, and there may be others. I may go through them and and think of. Sure. Some more, you know, y'all might go through them and think of, hey, why isn't this that way? I mean, why, why don't we just schedule a, a general discussion of desired amendments to the table of permitted and special permitted uses, yeah. um, and we can certainly talk about these three and any others that you have in yeah, mind. Sure and and they're very easy to change if you're so inclined. Yeah. One last question: um, When does a, a non-conforming use or a zoning violation become grandfather? Can you and, give me a little more context? Well, are we still in session? Uh, we are. Uh, I don't want to rat on anybody, but there's... I mean, well, I guess I'll, I'll answer the question this way. I mean, if it's a non-conforming use, I mean, it essentially can remain until that business ceases to exist in that way. can't typically be enlarged, um, but if it goes away, then it, it's gone, right? But otherwise, it could stay pretty much forever. Now. That's a very general, broad statement without knowing the specifics of yeah. what you're talking about. Well, that certainly didn't happen with the storage facility, did it? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All, I, that was before my time here. Yes, so, I know it was um, before your time. It was a disaster. Okay. The, the non-conforming use was demolished, and the then town manager allowed it to be not only rebuilt, but enlarged, the existing storage facility. But the difference is now we got people that that hopefully will will stand up and, and make. Yeah, sure I don't, I don't, right. I don't know the details yeah. of that particular well, he issue. Or what the, he was going to put shrubbery around the fencing, but that didn't happen. Oh, and talk about the setback, which doesn't exist. It's just exactly. It's just. Yeah. <clears throat> it's an. Yeah, I, I, I understand. Well, well I think it, it, it's helpful. For, you know, it probably depends on the timing, and I'm starting to sound like a broken record because it's just taken me a really long time for this simplified UDO. But it's helpful for me to hear these kind of comments from you, and as I'm going through that process, I'll make sure that we address those appropriately and that we're clear on that. So, um, you know, and it may be if I get to it before we get to to bring something back to you, I'll incorporate some of the ideas that I've heard here tonight, and then you all are ultimately going to review that document anyway. Well, in the, the land across from the storage unit is for sale, too, so, and that's right by side of the graveyard. Is that for sale? Yeah, it's a ridiculous price. Though. Well, it has been for Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, the price is, um, anyway, we're not going to go there. So we're, we probably have zoning Can issues I make a with the graveyard and everything in that land. Am I okay with that? Or to that point? Uh, I didn't hear what you said, but I said, um, "Are we to the point where are you can make a motion to adjourn?" Like to make That's a motion to adjourn? Yes, I would. Second. Second. All in favor of adjourning? We didn't vote on who's going to speak at the meeting. Oh, I skipped that one. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I guess that means the chairperson. Uh... Uh, you, you know, uh, it's not quite fair. Uh, yeah, yeah.